AMD might be finally taking the plunge that we always knew that they were going to do. NVIDIA has some details coming out on the RTX 3070, 3080 Ti, stuff that we've already known forever. And you won't believe why the Apple TV remote doesn't have AirTags built in. Let's get into the hot news, my friends. I am your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on this very here interwebs. And in case you wanna suggest an article for me to talk about on hot news, you can do so over at our Discord server with the link for that being in the video description. And in fact, this first popped up over in our Discord server, and I'm going to be bringing it to you right now. AMD's next-gen AM5 socket will have an LGA1718 pin count socket, which might not sound like a lot up front, but it will be a completely different setup than what we're currently used to with AMD motherboards, because currently they're on what's known as PGA, because the chips have the little pins on them, and then you just jam it into the motherboard because the motherboard has the receiving holes. Whereas with LGA, the chip has contacts on the back and then you jam that into the motherboard where it has like little bendy pins that spring down when you put it in and then you have the retention socket that gives good contact. This is something that Intel has been doing for a while. AMD's also been using LGA, but only on their higher end setups such as Threadripper Epic. And they've been using it for many, many years. So this isn't a foreign technology for them, but this is gonna be the first generation of Ryzen chips that are going to have this new setup. And the big thing to realize about this is that LGA 1718 denotes the amount of pins that are gonna be on the chip, which means that this will have more pins than the upcoming chip from Intel, which is gonna be LGA 1700, AMD beating Intel by 18 pins. And we're already expecting that Elder Lake is going to be a huge chip because it hit 1700 pins, whereas currently Rocket Lake is 1200 pins. So it's a big scale up for that. So you would expect that the AM5 socket is going to be rather large. AMD scaling this up with some indication that part of this is due to the fact that they have to support DDR5 memory. But also with this leak, the next gen Ryzen will not support PCI Express 5.0, only 4.0, even though Intel's gonna be supporting PCI Express 5.0 in their next generation. This probably isn't such a big deal, especially considering that consumer graphics cards just mostly hit PCI Express 4.0 and SSDs and all the other technologies are just now catching up. So implementing it first on a consumer device probably isn't necessary with the leak saying that this is going to happen for Genoa, which is their higher end Epic line, not necessarily the consumer facing one. But one thing to keep in mind is that the Zen 4 chips that are going to support DDR5 are supposed to come out after what is codenamed Warhol, which we have no indication of at this point. We're looking forward to a future where apparently AMD might be skipping Zen 3 Plus altogether and moving us straight over to Zen 4. That may be a possibility, but they're making the big transition over to LGA. There is some indication that the amount of pin contacts are gonna be fit into the same size chip that AMD is currently shipping, but considering that would be a massive increase, they'd have to size them down quite a bit in order to make that a reality. We're gonna have to wait and see what AMD brings out for us to know what size this chip's gonna be. And what size back relief do you need, my friends? Today's episode sponsor of Hot News is brought to you by Chirp. My friends, the Chirp Wheel Plus is my companion for making sure that I get all the back relief and stretching that I need done. I've been on the quest to hit 100 miles of running in this month of May, and one of the things I didn't realize that my back tenses up after a long run. And so just rolling around on the Chirp Wheel Plus afterwards helps to relieve that tension. It's the world's simplest back pain relief. You just roll on the little four-way spinal canal thing that the Chirp Wheel has, and it comes in multiple different sizes for hitting different spots on your back. It's FDA registered as a class one medical device, and it's built strong to support over 500 pounds. This has been my favorite bit of stretching technology that I've ever had, and you should check it out at the link link in the video description. The Chirp Wheel Plus is gonna be forever my favorite way of making sure that my back is staying nice and limber, my friends. Check it out at the link in the video description. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's episode of Hot News. We've got some more AMD news to talk about. There has been a leaked picture of the RX 6600 XT GPU, which you can see is just, it's a backplate. 
The expectation here is that AMD is going to announce this card on June 1st during the Computex keynote that Lisa Su is doing at that event. And you can see here that the 6600 and 6600 XT are both expected to launch next month. There is some indication that the 6600 or 6600 XT will be the GPU that's supposed to be featured in the upcoming Tesla Model S and Model X refreshes. It's not quite clear if it's gonna be the full version or a custom version for Tesla, but AMD and Tesla, you better believe Believe it's true. Now we have the world's first laptop that's combining Ryzen with Radeon RX 6000M GPUs. It's going to be the HP Omen 16, which is going to combine these. It's not yet for sale, coming soon, but you can find a Ryzen Radeon combo with up to a 5900HX processor into this bad boy. The pricing is probably not going to be too great. Now let's talk about Nvidia for a second because we got some new dates on the 3070 and 3080 Ti. Just as we keep getting closer, let's just keep moving that goalpost, friends. That's the best thing to do. Now the expectation is the announcement's gonna be May 31st, right before AMD's Computex keynote. And then a review embargo lifts on June 2nd for the 3080 Ti with the launch going on June 3rd. And then the 3070 Ti having the review embargo on the 9th and then the launch of it on the 10th, which would give tech YouTubers some time to benchmark both cards within a week of each other. So good job nvidia not stacking the launches on top of each other but in case you want to buy one of these cards right now tmall actually has razor pre-built systems for sale with the 3070 and 3080 ti you can potentially partner it up with some of these ryzen processors which is good except for some of the specs don't necessarily match up like the 5900x is allegedly an eight core processor which it's not but you can see the pricing here is not too great 3070 ti with the 5800x for 2300 bucks and then the 5900 100x with the 3080 Ti is going to be around $3,500, which obviously this isn't going to correlate into every single scenario where you could possibly pick these up, but they're coming, friends. You want the Ti's, they're happening. But what's not happening is the GTX 600 series. You need to get off that. NVIDIA is not supporting it with drivers anymore. The R470 driver is the end of Kepler support. It's dead, it's gone. Get over yourselves. Are a GTX 680? What? Why are you doing that to yourselves? Upgrade, friends. 780 Ti, nothing. GT 710, gang, where are you at? But just like NVIDIA is dropping support for Kepler, we're going to drop some GameStop Bitcoin update. GameStop doing hot. Ooh, up 3% on Friday. We'll see where it goes this week. But it had a solid, solid last week, increasing in a decent amount. Oh, it's, hopefully, it'll cross that $200 mark. But let's... Let's get off our uh, hype train and talk about the crash of Bitcoin down 11%, $33,000, a market cap of $630 billion. This is worse than the crash that was happening earlier in the week as far as where it's at numbers wise, maybe not percentage wise. Ethereum also chugging down the soda that is just pure despair and poison coming in at almost under $2,000, a 12% decrease at its lowest point. It hit 1739, not a good day for Ethereum. Ethereum, Dogecoin also down 12%, down to 30 cents, hitting under 25 cents as its low point. Just, just a brutal day in the crypto market, my friend. Everything's fine. Bitcoin is down. It's all over. Cryptocurrencies, it's all over. No. Many people have been waiting for the end of crypto and I've been waiting for Spotify to have good support on Apple Watch and now you can offline music onto the Apple Watch. How long did this take? It's ridiculous. You could only have it as like a standalone thing, like back in November, and now finally you can download it onto the watch. Why did this take so long, Spotify? Why did this take so long? Why did it take so long for PC to recognize that the DualSense is the greatest controller that's ever been made? Metro Exodus, the first game that's taking full advantage of it on PC with the game having adaptive trigger support as well as haptic feedback. In a video that was posted on Twitter, you can see that the trigger actually does have the feedback that you would want. And I can tell you that it just adds to a level of immersion using the DualSense properly. Definitely makes games feel a lot better. I've been enjoying the heck out of Returnal. I suck at it so much, but it's been such a good game to play. And that game like fully takes advantage of the DualSense controller. I'm, I'm immersed, but I'm not immersed into the Apple ecosystem, the walled garden that tells me that Apple is the best king that I've ever served. It is the best Lord that I've ever followed. It is the best company that will ever exist because they do stuff like this. Like when asked, hey, 
Uh, you know that fancy new remote you just came out for your Apple TV? Why does that not support the new technology of your AirTags where we could, you know, locate it in case we lose the remote, which is a very, very common plague amongst the people who reside on their couches. And their response was something of just sheer brilliance, magnificence, something that I couldn't have even thought they were so stupid to say. They said that the air tags are mostly for things out of your home. The Siri remote, which is what it's affectionately known as, it is now made a bit thicker, so it won't fall into your couch cushions as much. It's a thin dang remote, okay? The remote that I use to control the camera that I'm using is thicker than the Siri remote, and I would lose this in a heartbeat in my couch cushions because as soon as I depress that cushion with my fat, gigantic buttocks, it just slides right down into the crevice of the couch, and I'm never gonna find it again unless I take my flashlight out, I throw all the pillows across the floor, and I go digging for an hour, okay? Just making it slightly thicker when it's still real thin, have any... Just put the damn technology on your remote or say the battery life would be too bad or uh, it, it would just be too expensive. One of those I would believe, but you made the remote slightly thicker so it doesn't fall into your couch cushions, Apple. For the love of what? And for the love of what is what I was saying to NVIDIA when they announced that their RTX 30 series Founders Editions won't be getting the low light hash rate edition. Go check out Friday's episode of Hot News right there, and we'll see you in a new episode tomorrow, my friends. Cheers.